Well, hello, beloved. Here we are. Exactly where you expect us. Because the food, the life, the power that your soul receives, it comes from the Lord through the right vessels at the right time. That's how the Father knows and cares for every single one. So we are in the right place at the right time, speaking what He gives us. And at the right time, you can hear His words. See, it's again, we, we have to re-emphasize that this is not quite a teaching or a doctrine. Even if he has truth and he has some understanding of truth in it. But I absolutely trust of the anointing that's upon you and inside you so you can know things. You know, the word know, as you know, as you understand this, the word know is to have a relationship with the truth. So I trust him that you can have this relationship with the truth, which is a person, which is the Lord. And he is the one explaining things. Get in the habit to ask the Holy Spirit, what do you think about this? How can I hear this? Be, be open from the inside to receive what you hear with your ears. We were talking more about spirit and soul. And uh, as you probably can tell, this was uh, one of the foundations that the Lord set inside my understanding a long time ago when I started almost uh, 40 some years ago with him and he clarified that and I'm, I'm so blessed for that because I could understand that God is spirit and the, the way, the realm that he lives in it's not necessarily the perceptions and the mind thinking because I was so analytical and everything I had to uh, put it in the right place and understand in the right little box and the drawers and and spirit of God that understands and knows things different than the mind of man especially the mind of Adam that got corrupted after sin. So it helped me so much to differentiate and then to look at the body and understand I'm not the body. So spirit, soul, body um, helped a lot in seeing my true identity without separating off or throwing out, you know, the baby with the bathwater, right? Throwing, well, it's the soul, doesn't matter, your mind, it's the flesh, just throw it out. No, but understanding that it's a new source of life that's going to change the way I think, I feel, and it's going to bless my body. <laughs> no one hates his own body, that's in the Word. <laughs> No, just just uh, you know trying to kill your body it's not going to make you more spiritual <laughs> uh, no no it's the the body is is loved but from the right source not from the flesh and selfish part but from the right source of the new creation from the holy spirit so we we move a little bit on this because 
we we went through some of uh, the days of creation and we are we are moving towards the the sixth day um but just just trying to um understand more about this right so we are into we are into this uh, sixth day um so the first Adam was given dominion over the earth and the sea. Nothing that was said about the spiritual, the air, the second heaven. So that that is important. The mind of man can really do things on this realm, and the, the dominion of the first Adam. That's why we don't want to go back to the first Adam because he has, even, even without the enemy's uh, territory, enemy's oppression, if you go back in the first Adam, it's, it's just that's the dominion of what he could see and touch, feel. Right, so read back in Genesis, and that's what it is. But we really have to get into the second Adam's mind, okay. and to do that, we we talked about that you can start in day three of creation, try to see your place, but that's going to be under the second heaven or go in the first two days see the dominion over life before creation dominion over spiritual life you know the waters the air um, this are coming from before day three so first adam was given to name and create life, shape, already created life, actually. He didn't create the animals and the beasts of field. God created that, but he shaped them, so he worked on their definition, if you want. That's what the names do. The names create definitions. If you want the DNA, the written code of what that uh, flesh is going to do or what that thing is going to um, operate as. Okay. But the, the create, the set, the bless, the divide, remember all those verbs that came day one and two and then afterwards? Those are verbs, actions reserved for the new creation sons. God bless Adam and Adam's race. Right? But that's, this is where the new creation has this authority over to bless, to divide, to set things. So it's important that we are sons of God, but we are starting <laughs> with this new Genesis on, uh, on the first day. So we start before the day three. Um, the humanity problem is that part of the soul is in touch with this world, with space and time, and it needs salvation. So that's after the fall that's part of the soul and I'm just going to describe this the, the best I can explain it. Right? It's, um, there's, the soul is like an, like an interface, right? But that's, this part is really touching the ground, touching the flesh, touching the five senses, so all the information. But on this side, let's say the higher side, um, through the conscience, it, it touches the spiritual side. Right? So when the soul, when, when the man died, it says that the day you will die, when the man died, right, it 
this part it, it didn't have the connection with, with the spirit only had the connection with the five senses and the world right so but there is something in the soul that desires and looks for and searches because it started from God so if I have to describe humanity without being born again so humanity um, in in this realm of the world I think one of the most accurate description is in Ecclesiastes <laughs> I love that just just listen to that this it, yes it is the tree of knowledge but it's a very accurate description Ecclesiastes 3 verse 9 what profit has the worker from what in which he labors you hear the the curse yeah with the sweat you labor your whole life what profit I have seen God given task with which the sons of man interesting description of humanity the sons of man are to be occupied this busyness it's part of the humanity realm <laughs> yes that's under curse this the, the men are to be occupied the Lord he has made everything beautiful in its time so sets these boundaries of time the seasons the times also listen to this he has put eternity in their hearts that's the top part there is an eternity in the heart of man even if everything on this side of the soul it's measured by death <laughs> you get born you grow oh i'm getting old oh i'm getting old oh i cannot move this and that's the humanity part in touch with but there is eternity in their hearts except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to the end so there is eternity but in the humanity everything it's cause effect and it's uh, you know you can only understand uh, yesterday today tomorrow the linearity of time you can measure it actually I know that nothing is better for them see describes humanity nothing is better for them than to rejoice and do good in their lives and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor it is the gift of God <laughs> so even for humanity there is a gift of God which is do good sow some good seeds and reap some happiness to be happy man <laughs> the, the enjoy the good of all his labor and yes he sounds uh, um, very temporary and um, uh, you know it ends with expiration but if you have to describe humanity uh, maybe the good side of it right without the involvement of uh, the evil to destroy and but humanity under the expiration and the death that's a good description but eternity is in their heart so there is um, there is this part of the soul of man in touch with the spirit it's still <laughs> Solomon but that's it's almost like two sides I'm not sure how to explain exactly some people think that's that's the spirit of man or what's left of it and yes he says um, um, you know the conscience could be part of the spirit of man or it's part of this higher level of the soul right 
before being born again, before you get a new spirit and a new heart. I mean, this is huge. You're not becoming a first man. You are getting a new spirit, the spirit of God. It's one with this part of the spirit. He didn't just have this hope or desire for eternity, but actually you have eternal life. That's being born again. So this is, so, in, and he has, uh, I have a verse here, of Proverbs 20, 27. It says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the valley. So this is Old Testament. And this is, let's call it that, that deeper inner side of the soul, or the, the spirit of man, or how, how, you know, the terminology on a call. And that is where um, the Lord comes and it changes the heart, cleanses the conscience to the blood of Jesus and saves the soul through this part. Comes and saves the soul of man and gets it into a new creation. <laughs> a new creation. <laughs> so... This is a place where the second Adam, the Son of God, is walking into a new Genesis, a new creation, is starting with Jesus, the Son of God, in a complete alignment with the Father. And the Son can do everything the Father is doing. So think about that. We're talking about creation. We're talking about doing things. But the moment, the moment you are not in to the limitations, yes, it was perfect for what it was for the first Adam, but was for the earth and the sea and the creation already made. But the moment you are born again into the second Adam in Christ, in relationship with the Father, there is a different way of being and walking. Because then the Son does everything that the Father is doing. So you start reading Genesis 1 and 2 from the Father perspective. Ooh, that's big. Let it settle a little bit. But this is so different. You almost change the paradigm. You change the perspective. You come from Him. <laughs> Starting creation. Maybe that's when He says, Hey, son, in that parable, take ten cities. Maybe those are new worlds <laughs> that are starting. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So, the Son is not trying to do the will of the Father. It's not trying to imitate the Father. It's not trying. What would Jesus do now? He would be nice. Okay, let me try to be nice. It's not a copy and paste. No. It's, it's a new creation. It's a life-flowing new creation. It's Him coming through you. This is huge. And that's why that part of the soul that only knew this world and the time and space has to be redeemed, has to be ransomed, ransomed by the blood of Jesus. Stay in this unity, oneness. Very, very, very important to know that. Okay, You are not over in dominion, commanding, doing things from the old 
Adam, for the first Adam, from from the old man. No, that's that's not possible. You can try, but that sounds more like uh, witchcraft <laughs> than um, true authority. But when you come from the unity, from the one with the Father, the Son and the Father, through the new creation in the second Adam, then that is true authority. And the way you know it, the difference is that this is the new nature. It's going to be absolutely normal in the new creation to say to this, go, or be like that. It, it, it's not going to be like, mm, you have to close your eyes and uh, just, you know, your fists are so tight and in the name, you know, no, it's not going to be, that's not nor natural. That's somehow you try to teach your your humanity to have authority. <laughs> yeah, that's why rest is so essential because rest it allows brings this realm where the being and the doing become one. <laughs> we'll talk more about rest. So so here is a the Son, here's the soul of Jesus. You'll, you'll see from these verses that let the Father flow through and manifest all the miracles. John 5, 19, and Jesus said, I speak to you timeless truth. The Son is not able to do anything from Himself <laughs> or through my own initiative, not from outside in. <laughs> I only do the works that I see the Father doing, for the Son does the same works as His Father. And the emphasis here is it does the same works. It does. It does the same works as the Father. Wow! Because the Father loves His Son so much, He always reveals to me, see, the reveal that shows this type of relationship of eternal life. It's a revelation. It's not the learning by doctrine and teaching from outside in. It's a revelation. It's an impartation of life. He always reveals to me everything that He is about to do. And you will all be amazed when He shows me even greater works than what you've seen so far. <laughs> and greater works you will do, He said. How? Because the Father is going to reveal to you greater works. For just like the Father has power to raise the dead, the Son will raise the dead and give life to whomever He wants. The Father now judges no one, for He has given all the authority to judge to the Son, so that the honor that belongs to the Father will now be shared with the Son. See the revelation, the life is pouring, the honor is sharing from, yes, new creation, from the oneness of the Father. So, if you refuse to honor the Son, you are refusing to honor the Father who sent Him. <laughs> I speak to you an eternal truth. If you embrace my message and believe in the one who sent me, you will never face condemnation. For in me, you have already passed from the realm of death into the realm of eternal life. 
This is exactly what I described. That part of the soul that was in the realm of death. And everything that the death was doing, even if he learned to enjoy the fruit of his labor and go through seasons and times and family and kids and grandkids and it's still in the realm of death. But you have passed from that realm that the Ecclesiastes describes so well. You have passed from that into the realm of eternal life. This is the realm of the new creation. This is the new Genesis. <laughs> and I'm so excited that you can see this. So welcome. The realm of eternal life is the new Genesis. Hallelujah.